All right, I want to talk to you today about the Christmas debate. A uh, very much needed uh, discussion here on this subject because there is a lot of debate on this issue. And um, there's a lot of division that's been caused by this debate, quite frankly. Um, it has been brought to my knowledge that there are many brethren, some of whom I will name in this study, that have really been stabbing me in the back and have been doing their best to destroy this ministry because I don't stand with them in attacking uh, Christmas is the big one. Um, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the holidays out there, the, you know, obviously Easter, Halloween, not a fan of that at all. I believe Thanksgiving was originally founded by saved people as a sacrifice offering of, of Thanksgiving sacrifices of thanksgiving i did a whole study on that many years ago audio sermon and um, it was originally a day of fasting which is kind of an interesting thing but um this christmas issue i've been around this thing for a long time i did a study many years ago an audio sermon at our house church that we used to have um and it was called answering christmas criticisms <clears throat> and i uh, had a guy I was attending our house church at the time and he got really angry with me and and blasted me called me all kinds of names and everything else it was really rebuked me harshly and and uh and now last i heard he's a post trip or someplace and whatever else and and um so i've I, this is no new thing that was 2009 when i preached that by the way so um it's been a long time that i've been uh very much aware of this issue and uh, just for the record, I was anti-Christmas for a while, but then when I actually considered the arguments, I realized that the Bible does not have a clear teaching on this subject. It is a liberty issue, and I will be showing that from the scriptures today. Um, and what happens is these anti-Christmas people, they'll come out and they will lie about a lot of things. They will, they will really exaggerate the point to prove that you cannot have anything to do, anything to do with Christmas. And... As a Christian, you have to really look and say, all right, this, these attacks on this and, and, and whatever else, these arguments that are being used, do they line up with the scriptures? Is this really my final authority, this King James Bible, or is it outside sources? And I mean, just think about it. Um, is Christmas right for a Christian? Well, let's look up the word Christmas. What's well, not in there? Yule, Saturnalia, uh, any other thing that they try to claim, tie in, and whatever else there. Is it in Scripture? No. So, here's the whole point. A lot of these people get very emotional. They get very angry. Um, there's a weird spirit involved with this. Um, I'm just going to tell you right out front, it's, it's a liberty issue, like I said. Uh, you shouldn't be getting mad about it. Okay, this, my attacks in this study are not going to be directed at brethren that don't celebrate Christmas. There have been years I haven't celebrated Christmas. <laughs> Not a big deal. Okay, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. That's what the Bible teaches. You can esteem one day above another or every day alike. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. It's liberty. Okay, freedom. But I've seen far too many people over the years that make it their purpose to destroy my ministry that the Lord gave me. All right. Um... And Paul talked about his own ministry too, by the way. So don't go off on that whole thing. Oh, it's your ministry. I thought it was the Lord. Oh, shut up. Okay. I'm going to be just blunt with this whole study. Some of you people out there, you know, you have some major problems. The Lord entrusted me with a ministry, right? To preach and teach his word. I've changed the lives of a lot of people. There's a lot of people that try to compare themselves to this ministry. They can't even come close to it. All glory goes to the Lord. I still am baffled by the amount of people whose lives have been changed by this ministry. It's amazing. But one thing that I've tried to do is I've always tried to go back to the scriptures and say, okay, what does the Bible actually say? Because if we have arguments that we cannot back up with the scriptures, then we're fighting from a very weak stand. All right? So... Having said that, and like I said, I'm going to be just blunt. I'm going to kick people through this study, whatever. Uh, they need to be kicked. And I'm, like I said, I'm really sick and tired of seeing people. I mean, the one guy, Ryan Peltier and his wife, Melissa. Uh, they've 
been turning people, I've been told this, they've been turning people against me like crazy, and they went out and actually took a Ruckman reference Bible and they burned it. A King James Bible. Ruckman reference Bible. Burning a King James Bible. Um, I have Masonic King James Bibles and I will not burn them. You have some serious problems, but see, they go off on the holiday thing and then it's time to enter cuckoo land. Um, Philip Newton is another one. Um, I have parted company with Philip Newton. He used to recommend some of his videos. I don't recommend him anymore. Um, he lied in numerous places about the holiday issue. Uh, Brad Evanshire, Accountable KJV, another one, off on the this whole holiday thing, the holidays are evil, Christmas is evil, and whatever else, Brian Moonan, another heretic out there, going off on the the uh, holiday issue and things, and Scott Johnson, another one, I, I uh, very much disagree with on the holiday issue, Eric John Phelps, another one, and they just, they take these things and they make it, they just blow stuff out of proportion, but when you actually look at the claims that they're making, you'll see that it was lies. A lot of these things that they're saying that they're just bringing out, it's just a bunch of lies. It's a bunch of nonsense, okay? I'll give you one here just to kind of whet your appetite. Oh, all this, this pagan stuff about Saturnalia and about, and about Yule, you know. Oh, it's just all these pagan things and everything else. Really? Uh, where'd you get your information from? Well, I get it from this writer and that this website and that thing in there and whatever else. Are you aware, because I've been reading this and researching this stuff and everything else, are you aware that a lot of the things about Yule, the supposed pagan traditions and the you know human sacrifice rituals and everything else that you hear about, are you aware that it was actually written down by a Catholic, a um, Icelandic former Viking that became was converted to Catholicism, Snorri, uh, Strolson in the, I think, early 1200s. That's where the, all the poetic Eddas is one of, the, one of the things that he would, that he wrote. That's where you hear about Yule. Those are the oldest writings about Yule and the practices of Yule. Hmm. Just like the things that he wrote about the Vikings, the different sagas and Eddas and all that other stuff. Uh, find it interesting that the, it would be a Catholic something sanctioned by the Catholic Church about these heathen pagan people out there. Oh, you can trust them. They would never, you know, twist the facts to make those people look bad. And, you know, it's so funny because, oh, Christmas is so pagan, it's horrible, it's Saturnalia, it's Yule, it's all this other stuff. Um, how many of you out there ever saw anything really horrible or bad satanic ritual type of stuff or whatever at Christmas time? I don't know of anybody that actually went through that stuff. Me personally, from my childhood, living locally and whatever else. Uh, you know the funny thing? Every family had a different celebration. We all did different things. Oh, you do this at Christmas? Yeah, we don't really. We do that. Or do, do. If it's some kind of a satanic ritual thing or the mass of Christ, wouldn't it be the same thing for everybody? Why does everybody kind of make up their own uh, thing with feasting and getting together with family and giving of gifts and whatever? Because it's liberty, right? And the reason I called this thing the, the Christmas debate, this study here, is because, like I said at the beginning, that's all this is. It's a debate. It's a useless, pointless thing that you can go back and forth on. I could give you a whole slew of reasons why you should celebrate Christmas. If you're of Northern European heritage, by the way, too. If you're Shemitic or Hamitic or whatever else, don't waste your time with Christmas. It's not part of your ancestry. But I give you a whole list of reasons why you should, or we could say can, celebrate Christmas. But then the others can say, well, we here's the reasons why. And, what, and it just gets into this debate, and it's pointless. It goes back and forth. And you just end up with a headache at the end, and people are angry at each other and calling each other lost and heretic and whatever else. It's nonsense. The whole stinking thing. But let's look here in the Bible, and let's go to the Bible for our standards. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, we're going to read the whole chapter because there's a lot of very important things here. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. 
trying to make them Jews. If you don't, if you, you have to act like a Jew or else you can't be saved. Yeah. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question. So Paul's arguing with them. He said, no, they don't have to act like Jews. They don't have to keep the law and be circumcised and everything else. That's nonsense. Verse 3, And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. That's a, one of the problems, too, with a lot of these people that go anti-Christmas. They don't actually try to do anything to win people to Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they forget what the great joy is supposed to be all about, and that you can enjoy things in this world where it's a liberty issue. They forget about that. Just miserable, and you can't this, and you can't do that, and you... All this other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know that how... You know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they." Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the temple, tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build up again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Let me just pause there for a minute. Another one, this Brad Evanshire guy, this accountable KJV, he's coming out now and he's saying, you can't be called a Christian anymore. Christian is for church people, lost people, whatever else. And it's only, see, people have to be called uh, Church of the Living God. Because I did a study about that, and there's some other guys out there that are saying um, that, you know, how dare Brian have backed off on this whole thing. We're the Church of the Living God, we're not Christians. I made a mistake with that study, and I was corrected on it, and I said, okay, I'll take the study down. But some of them just latched onto it because it helps you to really move yourself into a special little group where it's only you and all this other stuff. You know, a lot of people that think that of me, if you would actually come and talk to me and actually contact me and whatever else, you'd find out that, no, I'm not that way. But whatever. The whole point is there, look at the verse. All the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. What do you call a saved Gentile? You call him a Christian, church of the living God. So what are you, a little God or something going on? No, Christian. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. If any man suffers a Christian, let him glorify God on this behalf. You know, Christian. There's nothing wrong with calling yourself Christian. But, you know, these guys come out now and, oh, you can't call yourself a Christian. You can't call this book the Bible. It has to be the Scriptures, you know, even though accountable KJV, King James Version, you know, is not in the scriptures. So, see, here's the whole thing. Our arguments have to be logical. They have to make sense. And I don't mean make sense to the lost world because, you know, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. I get that. But what I'm saying is you start getting into some of these weird argument type of things, you end up making a mess of yourself. You just make a mess of any kind of ministry that you want because you're contradicting yourself and and that's what this whole anti-christmas thing does i mean you go out to some lost person and say hey i'm against christmas they're not going to look at you and say oh you must really be saved they're going to look at you like you're crazy that's oh you're jehovah's witness or oh, you're an atheist that's what they're going to think but you know again proving right there verse 17 all the gentiles upon whom my name is called 
Christian. Not a big deal. You don't want to call yourself a Christian? Call yourself a member of the Church of the Living God or, I'm, you know, whatever. But I've, again, I've been contacted by so many people over the years. Brother, should we be calling ourselves Christians and whatever else? And Verse 18, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Now look at this. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. And holidays. Holidays are very important to abstain from because they're pagan. And I mean, by the way, uh, at this time of this writing, uh, Saturnalia was being practiced. It was actually a B.C. practice before Jesus Christ showed up on the earth. They were doing Saturnalia. As long as the Romans were there, they were practicing Saturnalia. Um, why didn't they mention it? And they say, well, Saturnalia eventually became, you know, they, they blended Saturnalia, Yule, and they put it together and made it Christmas or whatever else. It's a winter festival is all that, it, all that it is. Because in the north, if you live in the north, you understand that the days get really dark early, and so it gets kind of gloomy and kind of depressing and whatever else. And you also have all the harvest time and then the hunting time in the fall, and you go into a time where you want to have a feast, get everybody together and celebrate after all the hard work. That's all it is. Okay? Oh, well, Saturnalia is a pagan festival and horrible, terrible things and went on there and everything. Well, I'm sure with some people. But don't tell me all Europeans were going around ritualistically sacrificing their children or something. You know, it's nonsense. Where's your proof? Oh, that's right. What the Catholic Church wrote through Snorri Sturluson. You see the, the shaky foundation that these people have? I mean, well, we have witchcraft to think. Okay, what's witchcraft's oldest books? couple hundred years old they don't have anything you don't have no idea what those ancient heathen uh europeans were doing don't tell me that they were all just these horrible evil you know terrible people that's stupid you can't prove that doesn't say much about your ancestry either by the way if you're white european but uh continuing here verse 21 for Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as ye have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by, my, by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. All right? And again, here, here's the official letter that's sent out to the Gentiles that would have come down through to us. This is the same thing it's written for me. I'm a Gentile. You, you're probably a Gentile as well. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols. Abstain from them. And from blood. And from things strangled and from fornication. From which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Now, of course, the anti-holiday people, they have to say, well, see, the meat sacrificed to idol, that would be the, the ham that's cooked on Christmas Day in celebration of Tammuz or remembrance of Tammuz being killed by the wild boar. And, and see, and you have to dig all the stuff. Where's your sources at? Where's your proof at? Oh, it goes right back to the Snorri Sturluson and what he wrote at the behest of the Catholic Church. Where's your proof? You don't have any. You have none. And you have to understand, you're coming from a very weak argument here. And we're going to be talking about the Christmas tree thing here, Jeremiah chapter 10, in the next study. And I'm going to tear that whole thing to shreds because it's nonsense. There's no Christmas tree in Jeremiah 10. If you believe that, you've been lied to. Okay? Uh, verse 30. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered and the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. 
And Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren and unto the apostles, notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days after, Paul said unto Bar Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed uh, from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren, un brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Um, there's times you're just going to have to depart from brethren. And uh, quite frankly, like I said, I've departed from some. Um, whether they're brethren or not, that's between them and God, whatever, I don't care. I think when you start to get into this weird demonic thing of, you know, you're going to just try to destroy a ministry that you've learned from because of something as silly as Christmas. I don't come out and I don't condemn Christmas. I say it's up to you. You want to celebrate Christmas? Celebrate it. If you don't want to, don't do it. That's all I say. Okay. I mean, th think about how nutty it would be if I said you are required to celebrate Christmas. It is a requirement. You say, well, that'd be crazy. You couldn't prove it. Yeah. They can't prove that you're required not to celebrate Christmas. It's liberty issue. <laughs> oh, use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh. You're using your liberty to go worship Satan for the month of December. How am I worshiping the devil by putting some lights around and getting gifts for my wife and my son? <sighs> Nonsense. Well, see, we can take things, we can twist things, we can... Whatever. Go to Romans chapter 14. But again, you see there, if holidays are such a big deal, if there's some kind of a big thing of, oh, you have to stay away from Saturnalia, why wouldn't they have named it? Why wouldn't they have said you have to forsake all your, your uh, holidays and feast days and everything else? Why? Isn't that kind of odd? You know, um, there's another way to look at this whole anti-holiday thing, and that is that uh, you're supposed to give up your culture. Um, giving up your culture and all coming together uh, is a kind of a problem. God doesn't want that. God created the unique cultures out there. But uh, let's read here, Romans chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Vegetarian versus eating meat. Right Again, uh, Philip Newton, the one time I heard him, and he went off on this thing about if you're eating herbs, that proves because you're sick, so it's just sort of an herbal remedy. That's not what it's saying. It's not at all what it's saying. Verse 3, Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Right? Let me just stop there for a minute and tell you a little story here. Um, knew some lost people out in Montana. My older brother was living out there, wife and, and children out there, and, and there was this lost couple. The man was a logger, and the wife was a concert violinist. Uh, extremely talented, could play the violin very well. And uh, talk about an odd couple, you know, old logger and, and instrument maker and a, you know, symphony orchestra concert violinist. But... Um, they were vegetarian, but they knew that my brother and his wife and their children were not. And so she made a meal and she put meat in it for my brother and his wife and their, their children. And, and uh, I guess it was just a daughter at the time. And she said, I knew that you were coming. I know that you're not vegetarian. I made this meal for you and I'm going to eat it as well, but I'm just going to pick out the pieces of meat. <laughs> you see? She has, and she's not, she was, they weren't saved either, by the way. She has concern, I'm going to stand by my views and my convictions, but I also respect you. And I want to make you feel welcome in our home. Lost people having better character than a lot of the people that claim to be saved out there. Hey, you know what? Some Jews come here sometime. And I get, I say, let me cook a meal for you. That'd be great. 
and I get my skillet, my old cast iron skillet that I use a lot. Oh, it's seasoned with bacon grease. Hmm. To a Jew, that's an unclean animal. To a German, uh, Northern European, <laughs> very much into pork. Uh, I'm not going to use that skillet. I'm going to make something for them so that it would be respectful to who they are. Some brethren come along sometime and they say, yeah, we really don't eat meat. Fine, I'll make something vegetarian for them. Why? Because I can do that. Uh, somebody comes along and they say, hey, uh, we're not really into the whole Christmas thing. Oh, okay, I won't say anything about it. Um, I won't take you into a room where we have a Christmas tree set up and our gifts underneath it and whatever else and lights. and I won't talk about it. I'm adult enough I can do that. But I'm not going to, you know, curse at somebody and, oh, how dare you? How you pagan you? Oh, you know. <laughs> Let's look at the thing of holidays here next. Romans chapter 14, verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another man, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. <laughs> how don't people get that? I don't understand. I have no idea how people cannot understand that. It's plain. There is no condemnation of holidays in Acts 15 when they're sending things to the Gentiles. Obviously, they don't have to condemn Jews because, that you know, you go through the, the book of Acts, you go through the Gospels, and Jesus is celebrating the Jewish feast days. Paul's celebrating the Jewish feast days. They had no problem with the Jewish feast days, the Jewish holidays. There's no problem. All right? And holy day and holiday is the same thing, by the way. I mean, you can look that up. I mean, you can go through all the proof and everything else, and the people just reject it. I've been back and forth with these guys, this debate thing, for so many years. I'm so familiar with it. Uh, holiday is, and Holy Day are the same thing, okay? They're, they're right there. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's right there. You can look it up. The etymology of the word Holy Day turning into holiday. And, the, you know, we'll be getting into that a little bit here in a, in a little while. But these, the, all this, they just keep on rejecting it and rejecting it. And that's why, you know, I'm not going to get into this whole thing, this whole debate and whatever else. I want to show you what the scriptures say. No holidays were mentioned for the Gentiles to abstain from in Acts 15. Not one. There's not anything about you need to get rid of those pagan, you know, holidays and whatever else. There's nothing in there. In there. You jump over here, Romans 14, where he's speaking to the Romans, you know, that would have been practicing Saturnalia. He never mentions Saturnalia. You wonder, maybe there could have been people that were doing Saturnalia that were not going into the really wild parties and, and drinking a lot and fornicating and doing whatever else. And Maybe they just were giving gifts and being very moderate and saying, hey, just we want to get together with our family. See, we've forgotten a couple of things about the ancient world. We have electricity. We have lighting. So it doesn't really bother us. The dark, you know, things getting dark the way that they do at this time of the year. And it's nice to be cheered up with some lights and things, you know. Might be nice to see some lights out in the tree or some other things like that. Uh, I know it cheers me up when it's really dark, seeing Christmas lights out and Christmas trees and things. I love seeing that. But uh, we've also forgotten the thing about refrigeration. And you have the hard work of the harvest time, and it goes into the time they're smoking meats and they're doing all this other stuff, and you take some of the, the bounty of that harvest and you say, I want to celebrate with my family and my friends. It's a special time of the year. It's a wonderful time. I want to make something for somebody. Have gifts ready for my children and for my loved ones. It's a beautiful thing. That's why it's not condemned in Scripture. And you actually have to go outside of the Bible to prove that Christmas is wrong. Every single person who's anti-Christmas, you had to go outside of the Scriptures to prove it's wrong. This is the way it is. And again, if you don't want to celebrate Christmas, you're a single guy or something like that, fine. Doesn't matter. My wife and I, our first Christmas together, you know what we did? We went tracting. We did. We didn't set up a Christmas tree. We didn't have Christmas lights or whatever else. We were out tracting, gospel tracting. Fine. We have our son, and we got him a little, little uh, one-piece suit when he was a newborn baby, and it said, my first Christmas. We found it at a, a used uh, clothing shop. It was really cute. Had a little, little Christmas tree on it. Little red Christmas suit. Looked adorable in it. I thought, oh, he's turning into a pagan. Oh, you know. 
Look at this, verse 6. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. <laughs> Whatever, not a big deal. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth, eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Make up your own mind. It's not a big deal. Don't fight over it, is what Paul is saying. You get all these new cultures coming in, all these new peoples, Gentiles, and here's some northern German, Germanic type of people coming down through, and here's some people from over in France, and here's some from Spain, and here's some Jews, and here's some Africans, and here's some people from the Orient and whatever else, and all these different cultures. Don't fight over your cultures and your customs. Uh, stay focused on what matters most. You be fully persuaded in your own mind. It doesn't matter. But now we have to fight. Now we have to destroy people's ministries because they don't stand against Christmas. Verse 7, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, I need to make a little departure here from reading the text. Um, I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ. And if you're so dumb out there that you think that I don't understand when I'm sinning, I just, I, you know, I mean, I think it was Phil Newton said the one time, I don't know if he left the video up or took it down, but he said, I worship Satan. Brian Denlinger worships Satan for the entire month of December. Uh, do you, don't you think I'd notice that if I was worshiping the devil? Don't you think that there'd be some problems with my fellowship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Don't you think I would be kind of, you know, punished for that? I mean, it's pathetic what these people come out with. Oh, Brother Brian, he's right over here in this area, but, but he's a servant of the devil because he worships or he has a Christmas tree. He gets, I heard he got his son things at Christmas. Oh, it's terrible. Heresy, heresy. You're way out of fellowship with the Lord if that's the way you believe. You know, you're watching this and you say, well, you know, to me, Christmas isn't a big deal. I, yeah, you know, had a, it was just family fighting when, when I grew up, so it really didn't mean much to me or whatever else. Well, you get married, you have children, it might, you know, do some nice things for them to have Christmas celebrations, but you say, yeah, we don't really, we're just not into it. Okay, fine. <laughs> but don't come and backstab me because I'm not in agreement with you. Verse 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Talk about an, an, a stumbling block. How about the people that actually love Christmas, and they get saved, and they say, Boy, I can't wait to celebrate the Lord's birth. And we know he wasn't born on December 25th. Okay, we get that. But it's a time that we remember. We can say, yeah, boy, Jesus came and God gave us the gift of his son dying on the cross to pay for our sins. Wow, what a beautiful thing. It's a winter festival is all that it is. And you can make it a horrible, pagan, terrible time and whatever else. Or you can just say, no, we get together with you know, family and friends and we eat some good food and whatever else. I mean, let's tell you something. One of our big desires is we experiment on ourselves all the time, okay? We say we'll try all living off-grid. We'll try living without running water. We'll try be, because I can't recommend things to people unless I myself have tried them, you see? Well, another one is we want to get to know our true Northern European ancestry and do things the way people did it in ancient times. We want to try it and see what does it do for our health and whatever else. All right, that's one of our big things that we get into. And this year, we spent more time wild foraging, hunting, fishing, getting as many local edibles as we can. And there are some berries. We have cloud berries here, they call them, in northern Maine. And they're really good. They're, they're like a small little boysenberry, just a little ground plant. They're not very big. And they don't produce that much fruit. And there's other things, uh, chanterelle mushrooms. Um, they're yellow, bright yellow mushroom, really just amazing, much better than anything you can get in the store, but there's not that many of them. And there's other things like that that we harvested throughout this year, and what are we saving it up for? Our winter feast. 
Christmas time. It's a special time for us. We can come together and we can get special gifts for each other and do special things and, and have memories of, of times in the past where it was really special to us. That neat thing that our grandparents got us when we were just little or their, our parents bought us or that one time that we did this. It's a time of remembrance, of having fun and enjoying each other. I'm sorry if you had a terrible time growing up with Christmas and whatever else. And if you did, by all means, stop doing it. It doesn't matter to me. But we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Don't be a stumbling block to other people. Um, verse 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. There's a whole lot of things that have happened at Christmas time that make for peace, right? Um, and we should we shouldn't be cheering groceries or uh, grocery stores or department stores taking out hymns about Jesus Christ. Oh, it's good that they're not playing the Christmas music anymore. I think that's wonderful. I think it's terrible. I'd like to hear joy to the world. O come all ye faithful, hark the herald angels sing. I'd like to hear that being sung in secular stores while I walk through. That's a good thing. Secular, taking any mention of Jesus Christ out of the stores and whatever else at Christmas time is a terrible thing. Oh, we can't say Christmas, happy holidays. No, I'll say Christmas. I want to name Jesus Christ publicly. And, uh, you know, another story, I'll just say this about peace. I uh, actually heard a story, you can look this up, um, but uh, Christmas in the Trenches. There was a song about that, um, and uh, it was basically about World War I. And at one point in time, the, uh, I think it was the British and the Germans and the, was it the French? I forget, but they, they basically stopped fighting on Christmas. And they came out of the trenches and they were out there playing sports with each other and things and talking to each other and sharing food and whatever else and, and telling what they do for Christmas and things. Actually came together for peace because as Northern Europeans, they remember this festival time of the year, this festive time of the, the season is a really neat time. It's a time that leads to peace. <laughs> it's a time that can be lead to peace too for Christians, for those who are truly genuinely saved. But, oh, no, we have to be miserable and just arrogant and I'll have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, verse 20. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. I don't condemn myself when I'm having Christmas celebration. I enjoy it. I enjoy myself very much. And he that eateth, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you're convicted, you don't want anything to do with it, then don't eat. Then don't celebrate Christmas or whatever else. It's that simple. It's all the Bible's teaching. Right? God saved you as a Gentile. He doesn't expect you to all of a sudden start living like a Jew. All this Torah observant stuff and everything else. He doesn't expect that. He doesn't require that. You keep your culture. You keep who you are. You know? Colossians chapter 2. You know, I've, I've preached this stuff for years. You know, and there are still these people and they just come out and they'll just go and they'll, they'll tell these ridiculous, absurd lies about the origins of Christmas and the paganism and all this other stuff. And you look into it and it's actually not even true. Like I said, next study, I'll be proving that. Um, and they come out with all this stuff and they just make so much division and, and dissension and everything else. For what reason? Colossians chapter 2. Verse 16, 
Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day, called holiday nowadays, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a th shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. You know, one of the most beautiful things about Christmas is red and green lights. I remember this stupid uh, Satanist. I don't believe the man was saved for one minute. This uh, Doc Marquis guy. Oh, he was he was raised in the Illuminati. And the anyway, guy just so such a sodomite, just an effeminate sodomite, uh, the way he spoke and everything else. And he's, you know, oh, this this whole thing, spoke at Prophecy Club, America's Occult Holidays, I think the thing was called. I have it on VHS, going way back. And um, he said about how it's really kicking up a lot of dirt, you know, and, and how that this whole thing is really, you know, people are getting angry about it. And he was smiling and smirking about it. And I've thought about that since then and i looked into the guy he was lost there's no way the guy was saved said that the illuminati controls the jesuits okay how does that work the jesuits were created or the jesuits created the illuminati adam vesop was a jesuit professor at ingolstadt university in bavaria but the illuminati controls the jesuits yeah, okay <laughs> that's what doc marquis said and doc marquis by the way was all over mainstream media he was on the oprah winfrey show but christians listened to the guy yeah but he came out and he said, he said that, uh, you know, the red and green is the colors of the God and goddess uh, proof. Um, but here's the worst part. Red and green is the color of God and his throne. He that sat was look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And round about the throne was a rainbow like unto an emerald. You can read about that in Revelation chapter 5. Or 4. No, I'm sorry. 4. Chapter 4. Red and green. The northern lights, the collar of the northern lights. So when I look and I see red and green collars at this time of the year with the snow falling, we're supposed to actually get a big snowstorm tonight. Praise Lord, first one. Um, here in northern Maine. I look at that and it brings me joy. It's a shadow of things to come. I look and I say, someday I'm going to see the red and green, my God on his throne in the sides of the north. I can't wait for that day going to be beautiful but let's continue here let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind that's what a lot of these people are oh god showed me this and god showed me that and then it's just logical inconsistencies with their arguments god didn't show you that <laughs> you're going against liberty that's a problem it's a big problem. God didn't show you anything. Verse 19, And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. These guys are coming up with all kinds of standards that don't even appear in Scripture, in other words. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. I'm going to be doing some big studies on the, in the future on the whole thing of Gnosticism and will worship. These people, they worship their own mind. Their God is up here. There is no external God. It's all internal. All right. Oh, God showed me this. and Oh, I'm, I'm sacrificing these things. Oh, let me flagellate myself and whip myself. And sorry, children, no Christmas this year. I'll whip them too, you know. No gifts for you. Sorry, we have to just be miserable. Just walking through the storm. You know, and oh, there's Christmas music. I used to love that, you know, years ago, and I hate it now. And I, I'm against lights, and don't look at the lights, children, they're evil. <laughs> A bunch of nonsense. And humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Yeah, well, that's what these people do. They, they seem to be very holy, but when you actually look into them, it's just a bunch of pharisaical nonsense. Uh, it's funny, too, because Colossians chapter 2 condemns philosophers. Hmm. Lovers of their own minds. Man's wisdom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter three. 
and verse 17. And here's an important thing that you need to remember. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay? Again, what are the issues of liberty? Physical head covering. Okay? We have no such custom, neither the churches of God. A woman wants to, to you know, be covered or uncovered or whatever else in terms of a physical head covering? Fine. Not going to judge anybody for that. You want to wear a physical head covering? There's a lot of Jewish women that say, only my husband should see my actual hair. And they'll wear a wig or they'll wear a covering over their hair. Fine. Wonderful. That's your cultural thing? Good for you. My wife, I want people to see her hair. She has long, beautiful hair. Okay? No contention there. Um, what you eat. Some Christian comes along and says, hey, I... I Stay away from meat. I'm, I'm more into the vegetarian stuff, and I try to eat this. And Okay, fine. You know, I'll have some discussion with you, perhaps. I'd like to hear your opinions. I'll give you my opinions. But that's up to you. Somebody comes along, and they say, hey, I'm, I'm a saved Jew. I, I stay away from pork. Absolutely. I'll make sure to use stainless steel skillets with no bacon grease anywhere near them, and I will use all completely, you know, Jewish-approved, kosher types of uh, ingredients in what I make for them. Not a problem. And the other issue is holidays. We read about it over there in Colossians chapter 2. And these are the issues we have liberty in. You don't have liberty to drink and get drunk and say, hey, you know, I just, you know, I get blasted every once in a while. I have liberty. I can do what I want. No, no. Drunkenness is condemned in Scripture. Well, I have liberty to go out and smoke big cigars or whatever else. One of you put a, a link to this Jeff Dirkman a guy and he's sitting around smoking these big cigars and whatever else. You don't have liberty for that. Show me anybody in the New Testament that smoked. Give me a break. Stuff's terrible for you. But, uh, you know, he's defiling the temple of God. Whatever. Spoke against cigarette smoking a long time ago. Um, but that's not an issue of liberty. I mean, show it to me. One man smokes, another man doesn't. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. No. But holidays... Holidays are something that is a liberty issue. And if you are speaking against that, if, if I would force Christmas on people, then I am going against liberty. And if you say you're forced to not celebrate Christmas, no Christian, no truly saved Christian could celebrate Christmas in any way, shape, or form, then you are going against liberty and you are going against the Holy Spirit of God. Period. <laughs> Period. And if you're going to stab me in the back and turn people against this ministry over a, a liberty issue then may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And he will. You're not going to get away with it. And again, I've seen this thing. I'm sorry, I have to speak foolishly here. I've been around a long time. I've preached in the church buildings. I'm not some kind of a guy that just sets up a webcam and whatever else and runs my mouth for a while and I don't have any experience. I have a lot of experience. A whole lot of experience. I've preached in church buildings. I've preached outside of church buildings. I've preached on the street. I've done a lot of that stuff over the years. Again, a lot of you people learn most of your doctrine from this ministry. So don't even talk to me about it. But you know what? Every anti-Christmas Christian I've ever met had other issues. And in my experience, they'll pick something that they can pick on. It's like a bully. He'll pick on a little child because he knows that he's actually very weak and he can't pick on somebody his own size. What I'm saying is I've seen Christians that have some kind of very serious sin in their life. Some porn addict or whatever else. But uh, I stand against Christmas. Mm. I'm a strong Christian because I don't celebrate Christmas. Christmas is pagan. Christmas is wicked. It's evil. And they get all this weird hatred thing about them. You know what you should be like as a Christian? As a mature, born-again Bible believer? Somebody comes up and they say, Merry Christmas. You just say, hey, praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Somebody comes up and they say, eh, I don't really want anything to do with it. Oh, praise the Lord. That's great. I don't care. You do what you want. Not a big deal. Oh, Christmas is all about pagan sacrifices and ritual this and, you know, no, it's not. Oh, if you celebrate Christmas, it has to be about Santa Claus and going to Catholic Mass. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. You say, well, I did that stuff growing up. Okay, then cut that stuff out and just have a time of, Feasting, not, you know, abominable, reveling, banqueting type of thing. Obviously, you don't have to get drunk and whatever else to have a feast. 
you come and you bring in the nice foods that the Lord helped you to catch or harvest or whatever. You say, hey, I'd like to buy some extra, some nice cheese for our little celebration time. So an extra little special meal. You know, for years, one of the practices that we do at our birthdays is to say, you have a special meal. What do you want to eat? Thankful that we've had you for around for another year, that God gave you another year of life. And again, you know, these guys will go off on birthdays too. The birthdays are an abomination. You're, you're worshiping yourself and come up with all these just nonsense arguments that are not, not, you won't find one of them in scripture. That's the whole thing. Not one of these, these guys can prove their, their standards and things from scripture. Just, well, I can twist it here and tweak it there. Whatever. So that's going to be it for that study. Um, so, you know, you can debate it, you can fight it. You, if you want to get in the fighting and all the other stuff and you just make a bunch of videos against me and, and think, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> Nothing new. Um, cover up your, your greater sins by kicking something like Christmas. And again, I've known, I've known guys that, oh, oh, brother, I'm struggling with porn and, oh, and everything, but then they hate Christmas. They have all these other issues, these really serious issues, but, you know, yeah. Uh, so if you're, if you're newly saved, don't fall for this anti-Christmas stuff. It's, it is not based on sound scripture. And, uh, we will be getting into the one key passage that is used to kick Christmas. And that is Jeremiah chapter 10, verse six, I believe it is, uh, you know, gets or 10 verse four or something. We're going to read the passage in the next study, um, about the whole thing of the Christmas tree. It's how it's condemned. It's not a Christmas tree. It's a pagan idol. Okay. And I will prove it in the next study. So um, enjoy the holiday season if that's what you're into. If you don't want to, then don't. Simple. But as for me and my house, we will have fun at Christmas. Okay. We put up some nice pretty lights, Christmas lights. We get some nice gifts for each other. We don't go overboard. We don't get into $6,000 worth of credit card debt or something like that. That's wicked. But, you know, we make nice meals. We say, hey, we, we got some really good mushrooms or wild berries or whatever else, and we're going to save them up for our Christmas celebration to remember the good times we had that year and celebrate and thank the Lord for uh, being able to have a winter festival there, a winter feast to help lift the mood when it's so dark and cold out there and everything else. I love to see the lights. I look forward to that. And it helps me to look forward to heaven to the feasting that we will have up there and the lights that I'll see up there and the nice, beautiful cold and everything else. Looking forward to it. So that is going to be it. And uh, like I said, next study is going to be on the Christmas tree issue. Thank you for watching.